long a lonely winding road at twilight. In time, the brothers reached a river too treacherous to pass. But being learned in the magical arts, the three brothers simply waved their wands and made a bridge. Before they could cross, however, they found their path blocked by a hooded figure. It was death, and he felt cheated. Cheated because travelers would normally drown in the river, but death was cunning. He pretended to congratulate the three brothers on their magic, and said that each had earned a prize for having been clever enough to evade him. The oldest asked for a wand more powerful than any in existence. So Death fashioned him one from an elder tree that stood nearby. The second brother decided he wanted to humiliate Death even further and asked for the power to recall loved ones from the grave. So Death plucked a stone from the river and offered it to him. Finally, Death turned to the third brother. A humble man, he asked for something that would allow him to go forth from that place without being followed by death. And so it was that death reluctantly handed over his own cloak of invisibility. The first brother traveled to a distant village. March 1958, the evolution of invisibility in general started as a World War II drama, but it gave the idea to the Star Trek screenwriter Paul Schneider about starting a way to transport in space like a submarine going underwater. December 1966, invisibility gets into Star Trek eventually and airs in episode 14. September 1968, this technology finally gets a name and is called a cloaking device. June 1997, 1,000 copies of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone get printed where the invisibility cloak is mentioned and used. October 2006, physicists from Duke University showcase the world's first ever invisibility cloak. October 2007, British military start testing a new creation using the invisibility cloak, an invisibility tank which uses cameras to show the landscape surrounding the tank to fully camouflage it into the environment. Summer 2008. Scientists at the University of California use metamaterials, which is a way to show properties not usually found in natural materials, to bend light in a way that allowed them to view images through a series of multiple lenses. August 2010, scientists at Tufts and Boston Universities created a tiny invisibility cloak able to use terahertz waves. The only problem with this great invention is that it was crafted by materials from etching 10,000 golden resonators, so it was really expensive. December 2010, Nature wrote that two scientists, one in Singapore and one in London, developed a way to get more effective metamaterials from calcite crystals, which is cheaper than gold, obviously. October 2011. In Texas, researchers made a video of a real invisibility cloak that uses carbon nanotubes, which is a tubular molecule that uses a lot of carbon atoms. November 2012, researchers from Duke University created a flawless invisibility cloak able to completely hide miniature objects from view. March 2013, the biggest obstacle with these cloaking devices is that they're big and bulky and need labs and desks to work. Now, the University of Texas has created a very thin material that's only 0.15 millimeters thick. Sebastian Anthony from Extreme Tech had said, it really is only a matter of time until an actual invisibility cloak is realized. Don't you agree? Though we wish there was an actual invisibility cloak out there, we'll just have to settle for the cloaking device created by John Howell and Joseph Choi at the University of Rochester. This is the latest cloaking device that can actually do 3D continuously multi-directional cloaking, so it can transmit all rays in the visible spectrum. As seen in the ray diagram, the lenses are placed in such a way and distance so that the light will bend. The light bends so that what is beyond the fourth lens is seen but nothing between the first and second lens is visible. Take a look at this picture of the device at work.
There are two major ways that this specific cloaking device can be applied to aid us in the real world. First of all, it can help medically as surgeons can use it to see through their hands to what is actually happening beneath them. This could decrease the risk and increase the success of many operations. Also, it can be used to help truck drivers with large and heavy loads see behind them to incoming traffic or help when they have to back out. This could help traffic and make the road slightly safer. Since these are just possible applications, with this being a fairly new creation, we cannot judge the effectiveness. Overall, this device is a very simple cloaking device that could help the world in many ways, and who knows, maybe this will help us create a real live invisibility cloak just like Harry Potter.